Her name is Sweet Potato Pumpkin Soup. And that's gonna be delicious. And I already made it, so I already know for a fact you're gonna love that one. Because the weather is getting cooler, and I figure let's get warmed up to a nice soup. And it freezes really well too. But let's get started on this recipe. So this recipe right here is a roasted cauliflower recipe, which you can do it many, many ways. Cauliflower, we're working with that today for two reasons. One, because it's in season. And two, well, it's a great grain alternative and it's a grain boosting powerhouse of a vegetable. Cauliflower has sulforaphane, which is powerful phytochemicals, and it also has choline, which is brain power. And that's why we're working with cauliflower. Let me get my gloves on. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a recipe and it's called roasted cauliflower with chickpeas and a tahini lemon dressing. It's very simple to make. It sounds crazy, but it's so easy and so delicious. We're gonna use a whole head of cauliflower, two carrots, a half of red onion, and the juice of one lemon. We're also gonna use a half a cup of fresh parsley, and in the dressing, I have all the ingredients nice and fast, which means ready to go. And the ingredients to the dressing are very simple too. It's gonna to be the juice of a lemon, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of tahini, a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a half a cup of fresh parsley. Now you can use fresh, you can use dried, you can use frozen cauliflower, you can use frozen carrots, Whatever you have is gonna work in this recipe. It just cannot fail. So I've already got my oven nice and preheated. First, we're gonna to toss our vegetables together in this bowl. I'm gonna prep them out first. What we wanna do with this cauliflower is we wanna wash it really good in the sink, which I've already done. But I wanted to show you that you just wanna just pull off of these stems. Pull the stems right off, they come right off. And if you're wondering what to do with these stems, well, you could compost them. You could also give them to your friend who has maybe some animals. Bunny rabbits love those. But you could also put them into your plants. There's a lot of stuff you can do. It's got so many vitamins and minerals, it's hard to throw them away. So now I just have my one head all by itself. Looks like the top of a tree. Actually, it looks like a brain because it's a brain boosting powerhouse. That's why. So we're gonna take this cauliflower. I'm gonna use this bowl right here. And I'm gonna pull the cauliflower off and make little tiny bite-sized trees out of it. So I'm, this is a great thing to do with your younger ones in the house. They have fun doing this because it really does look like little baby trees. And you're just gonna pull them off and you're gonna think in your mind about people taking bites of this. And when people take bites with a fork, you want them to kind of fit on a fork. So you wanna make them that small. So I'm just gonna break it apart and just pull it apart like so. Again, while I'm doing this, I love to talk to you about cauliflower because vegetables, that's my game. That's what I love talking about. So cauliflower has antioxidants. It protects the cells from free radicals. It reduces inflammation. I mean, it's got essential nutrients that help fuel our bodies. So why aren't we working with cauliflower more? I looked up some really interesting recipes that I wanted to share. Some people are living a a vegan lifestyle and they're using cauliflower as a meat alternative because it does feel like meat if you do it the right way and you glaze it with your favorite spicy sauce and you put it and you bake it in the oven and you roast it it comes out so delicious and it's so easy to cut open and it really does fill you too another great use for cauliflower which is a very new trending thing is cauliflower rice cauliflower pizza crust which that's awesome cauliflower hummus cauliflower mashed potatoes Cauliflower mac and cheese, cauliflower tacos, cauliflower tortillas. There's a million things you can do with cauliflower and it's so much fun and it takes up so much space. It's so big. It makes a huge meal, which is awesome too. So I've got my cauliflower nice and into little trees, tiny little trees. Still going here with the cauliflower. Of course, I can't stop talking about the roasted cauliflower with chickpea and lemon tahini because that's our recipe today. And I've already made it once, so I've got a little bit of passion for it now. So let's talk about the health benefits of cauliflower. Okay, let's see. It's got many nutrients. It's high in fiber. It's high in 
in nutrients and vitamins and minerals, and it's still low in calories. That's pretty cool. It's also got your choline. It's also a great grain alternative. I mean, this is great to add to your diet because it's easy. It's also right now seasonal, which is great. Now, why do we wanna add seasonal produce to our diet? Well, one, it's less expensive. And two, it's great to change it up a little bit. I mean, there might be people on this call that really haven't worked with cauliflower. Maybe they go in the produce section of their grocery store and they just walk right past it. Well, maybe today you'll find a reason not to walk right past it and give cauliflower a try. So now I've got the cauliflower all tossed up and it looks like just little baby trees, the little tops on them. They're so cute. Kids would love to help you work with this one. Now we're gonna cut two carrots. Now carrots are fun because you know what they do. They help your eyes. And when I teach children how I know so much about how things help your body, well, check out this carrot. For instance, if I, if I cut it open, it looks just like an eyeball. If you look in the middle of a carrot, it really looks like an eye because it helps your eyes. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna take this vegetable peeler and I'm just gonna peel off the skin. I did already wash my vegetables, but I'm also gonna peel the skin off just because we want the person enjoying this dish to not see anything that they're not used to seeing. And that's why we typically peel off the carrot skin. Now, if you have any tips or tricks of how you like to work with carrots, be sure to throw them in the chat box because we love learning from each other. That's what we do. And that's what life's all about, learning from each other. So now I've got the carrots. It's two carrots. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cut these into a julienne cut. First, I'm gonna take the ends off, get rid of those. And then I'm just gonna cut them down the middle, nice and long. And then I'm gonna cut them one more time, right down the middle, nice and long. I'm gonna to try to get little matchsticks. That's what we call them, little matchsticks. So if you think about a matchstick, then you can think about exactly how you want the cuts to look. And they're gonna blend really nice in this rainbow of a salad which looks like a salad, but it's really a side dish, or it can even be a dip. You could do so much with this ditch. I, after I made it, I kept thinking of the million things I could do with it. I was gonna bake it again and make it into a mash. So now I've got them all lined up. I'm just gonna cut them in the size of a mash dip. That's it. And then I'm just gonna throw them in. Remember that was two carrots. So now we've got a little bit of white and we've got a little bit of orange. Now we're gonna get a little bit of red. We're gonna use a half of red onion. So I've got my red onion right here. I'm gonna cut down the half, I'll put the other half over here. And I'm gonna get rid of this outer layer of skin, cut off the edges. And I'm gonna put a half of onion in here. Now how I'm gonna cut this is I'm gonna make it very, very thin and very, very little because that way it'll toss really nice into each bite. Now some people might say, I don't like red onions. Okay, use a white onion or don't use onion at all. How's that? <laughs> so I'm gonna cut these up. I'm just gonna go long ways, right down. Nice and long and thin. And then I'm gonna break them apart with my hands to put into this bowl. And now I've got them nice and thin. They kind of look like a half a moon. And I'm gonna toss them right in. And I'm gonna do this by hand because we don't want them to be all cluttered. So we're gonna keep them nice and loose. This recipe is so easy. I mean, I've already preheated the oven to 400 degrees. We're gonna bake this for 30 minutes and we're gonna keep it al dente. This is a, a side dish or a vegetable, or this could even be a meal. I mean, it can be whatever you want it to be. That's what's so fun about cooking. You can make it your way and you can add things that you like. You might like jalapenos. You might like to put anything you want in here and make it yours. And then you can name it and your whole family can use it as a side dish and you can put it in your rotation of meals. It's a great thing to add too because you're getting all the health benefits. So now I'm just tossing it in here using my fingers to loosen them up so they can all get throughout. Okay. Now after this, we're gonna work with chickpeas, otherwise known as garbanzo beans. Now with garbanzo beans, when you're at the grocery store, you wanna take an extra couple seconds when you're buying anything in the can and you wanna to say to yourself, Wait a minute, let me see if they have a low sodium one. And the reason we go for low sodium is because they use a lot of salt when they preserve canned foods. So if you can, try to check for the low sodium version. 
Now, if you can't find it, that's okay. You're still gonna rinse them and drain them. That's what we do with garbanzo beans. We rinse and drain them. Now, when you rinse and drain garbanzo beans, you're taking away like 25 to 30% of the sodium, which is awesome. So you definitely wanna rinse and drain them. And that's what we're gonna do here. This is one can, which is a 15 ounce can of garbanzo beans. So, so far I've got the colors of a rainbow. I've got red or purple, whatever you wanna call the red onion. We've got orange for the carrots and white for the cauliflower. It already looks like a good time. Okay, now we're gonna open up these garbanzo beans. Now I did purchase the low sodium version, but you can find what you find in your store. And I'm gonna use this little strainer right here. And I'm gonna strain them out, but I'm gonna do it over here in the sink because I'm gonna rinse them. They say to rinse them three times. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them. Okay, they're rinsed three times. I've got my garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans are a lot of fun to work with. I put these in my tuna now. I mash them and make tuna with them because it really does add so much more protein. You can't go wrong. There's a lot of fiber in garbanzo beans as well. And they're great plant-based protein. One cup provides one third the daily protein needs for an adult. Can you believe that? Just having these in your cabinet can be a game changer. So now we've got this beautiful bowl of roasted vegetables. They're not roasted yet, but they will be. I'm gonna give you a close up of this one. You've got your red onion, you've got your carrot, and you've got your cauliflower. And now we're gonna take this bowl and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one tablespoon of grapeseed oil. Now you can use whatever oil you have. I like to use grapeseed oil because it has a great high heat temperature. It can take a highest heat as about 450 degrees. That's what's so great about grapeseed oil. You can actually cook with it on the pan as well. So I use it as an alternative to olive oil because it's less calories. And it's also good for you. A lot of people use it for their hair these days too. But it has a non-existent taste and it's less expensive than olive oil. And again, it has that high smoking point. So now I've got it all tossed together. I wanted to make sure everything got nice and wet with the grapeseed oil. And now I'm gonna grab my sheet pan and I'm gonna put these vegetables right on the sheet pan, just like this. Real simple to do. Any skill level can do that. That was just one head of cauliflower, a half of red onion, two carrots and a can of garbanzo beans. This is going in the oven. It's gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes and it's gonna roast. We're gonna take it out 30 minutes. Let me do a timer actually. Let's put this timer on. Can you imagine if I forgot the timer? Let's see here, there we go. Okay, it's on a timer. And now we can work with the sauce. Now this dressing, when I made it, it inspired me to make other dressings just like this one. It was a lot of fun to make. So let's get started. So I've got my mixing bowl here and I've got a whisk and I'm gonna whisk it all together. Now the dressing calls for the juice of one lemon. So I'm gonna take this lemon, cut it in half. I've got this lemon juicer here, but you can do it any way you like. The kids really love working with these. They're fun and they keep the seeds out, which is great. So I've got half a lemon there. I've got the other half right here. And now this is one lemon. Now the recipe did call for the size to be, when it called for the lemon juice, it said one juice of the lemon. But we were trying to think, how can we make sure it's measured? How do you measure one juice lemon? So I brought this little nifty thing over here. Let's see, a smaller one. I've got this small measuring cup here because I'm really curious too. Let's see what one juice of a lemon is. Just in case you're using lemon juice from the refrigerator that you already have, this is one and a half ounces. So one and a half ounces, not bad at all. So we're gonna pour that in there. The lemon juice does make this dressing come alive as it always does. We're gonna use one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Now, if you don't have Dijon, Susie? what mustard do you have? Chef Susie? Yes. I don't want to, uh, to interrupt your flow there, but what if I didn't have a lemon? Would I be, would it be okay if I substituted lime, the juice oh, of a lime, lime or the juice of an orange or another citrus fruit? I think any citrus is going to make this dressing rock and it might even make it better. Sometimes everything happens the way it's supposed to in the kitchen. 
So I've got my dressing, I've got my one juice of a lemon, my one tablespoon of Dijon. Now we're gonna do two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna pour that right in here. I've already measured it out. And let's see, what's next? We've got two tablespoons of tahini. This is tahini, I've already measured it. Now, if you don't have tahini, you could use peanut butter. You can make your own tahini with sesame seeds. You could use almond butter. You can actually Google, what can I substitute for tahini? And you'll be surprised what you find. So I've got my tahini. Next up, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of red chili flakes, which when I first made this, I thought it could probably use a little more, but that's what it called for. So I've got my red chili flakes. If you don't wanna use chili flakes, don't use them at all. You can barely taste them anyway. Now, what makes this dress, this whole thing come alive is this right here, the parsley. When I was chopping up the parsley, I was blown away when I made the dressing of how it really made it all so fresh. It came together really nice and I was impressed. So we're gonna do it here too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this parsley. What I do is I just take a handful because we're doing a half a cup, that's kind of a lot. So I'm gonna take a handful of it and I'll put this other parsley aside. Then I'm gonna see what I can work with here. What I like to do is turn it upside down and just kind of pull out these long stems. People don't like stems. However, stems have a lot of nutrients. So when I make my green goddess dressing, I use all of the stems because they really are packed with nutrients. Parsley is a great vegetable. When you're in the grocery store, try to incorporate parsley. Put it in your refrigerator and try to use it on every meal. It really has an aroma and a taste. I can't make pasta without it. Parsley is my best friend. And we always have it here because there's always a meal that can always use parsley. It's also a natural diuretic, which people don't really know that, but parsley is a game changer. So now we're just gonna chop it up because we're looking for a half a cup and I've got my measuring cup here and that's a lot of parsley. But again, that's what's gonna make this dressing taste the way it does. Now again, back to parsley, it's got vitamins A and K. It's great for bone and eye health. Don't we all need eye health? Crazy. So I've got this parsley. What I do is I just kind of chop it, and then I turn it around and I chop it again. Now, if you're using dried parsley, it's so much easier, right? But this is the long way, and I like to do everything the long way. So I can put my love into it because love is the best part of this recipe, the most important ingredient. And if you agree, raise your hand. You gotta put love into it. I'm just chopping away at this parsley. Then I'm going to add it to this bowl and I'm going to whisk together. Again, this dressing, one juice of a lemon, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of tahini, a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a half a cup of parsley. Now I've got my parsley so good that I can smell it. That's how you know you're done. So I'm going to take this and see if it measures a half a cup. Let's see what I got here. Let's see if I can measure one half a cup of parsley. Let's see. Well, it's exactly good. So I'm going to toss it right into my dressing. And then I'm just going to whisk it together with this whisk. Now I've got my dressing ready to go. Now when that comes out of the oven, I'll toss it in here. And then I'll just plate it out. And I'll serve it as a side dish with tonight's dinner which is great. You can even throw it pasta in with it if you want to do that. You could freeze it and use it another night. There's a million things you can do with this recipe. Let me just show you how great this dressing looks. It really smells awesome because of the Dijon and that lemon. Looks really nice too. It's a great recipe. Now, while we wait for our roasted vegetables, because we're gonna toss them in this when they're done, we can talk about next month. November 10th, we're gonna do that sweet potato and pumpkin soup. And then on December 8th, we have another recipe. We also have one January 12th, and we also have one February 9th. If you can mark that down in your calendar, it's the second Wednesday of every month. Now, if you've registered for these cooking classes, we do appreciate your support, but we also like to send you some free gifts. So in the mail, when you put your address in, you will be receiving some great culinary tools, such as a vegetable scrubber, a vegetable peeler, measuring cups, measuring spoons, a spiralizer. Have you ever used one of those? They're so cool. And a food thermometer. 
So I also, while I have some time here, I'd like to mention a couple people. One, Riley Franco. Riley Franco, hi, how are you? <laughs> Riley serves as the Director of Community Outreach at AARP, and she's got years of experience within the new nonprofit and small business sectors. She made this series possible and she made it come to life. So we wanna say thank you to Riley Franco and to AARP, which a lot of people don't know, AARP is not just for people over 50. You can be over 18 and join, and you can learn so many great things. They have so many great free programs that they have within their community. They give art lessons. Can you believe that? They also do webinars, and they also give you so many different ways of learning about ways to get healthier. And if you have issues, they have support groups. They've got it all from exercise classes, something of interest for everyone. And within today's recipe here, this is brought to you by AARP. So we wanna say thank you to them. And I've already introduced Aurora Buffington. She is my boss and she is the Dr. Buffington. And she oversees the food system programming with health and nutrition. She also oversees many of the programs within Extension, including Healthy Kids, Healthy Schools, that's my program, and Healthy Food Systems. And she also does the home preservation, which, let me tell you about where I work. This right here is Nevada Extension. Nevada Extension is an extension office, which is all over the county of different extension offices. And they really give out these free programs for all ages. But that food preservation program, that's something you have to try. They do gardening, which I love. They do everything you can think of. You go onto the website, which is right here, extension.unr.edu, you'll see everything they offer. It's pretty cool. That's why I work there because I love what we do for the community. And then Natalie Mazzullo, she's already introduced herself, but that woman holds a lot of hats. I couldn't believe it. That's why I wanted to help work with her because she wears so many hats in the healthy aging program in Nevada. I mean, she's everything, you name it, even with the Sanford, Center for Aging. You name it, she's in there. So if you have any questions at all, please reach out to her. And she did make a point to me when we were talking the other day, is that if you do have a friend or a family member that might be food insecure or that might even want a hot meal, they will provide hot meals. You call the number 211, that's the number in Southern Nevada, but you can find the other numbers anywhere you want throughout the county. So when you call that number, that number will direct you to a way, regardless of your income status, to get congregate meal sites, have meals delivered, and extension offices are in every county. You can call and request different programs. They could even help you make a new program. But if you contact your local office, and in Nevada it's 211, they can help you find meals that are offered. People in nutrition and dietetics, they think we just do all of these fun, healthy meals, and we, that's what we do. Not really. Half of what we do is we help people stay fed because that's how we keep this world moving. We keep people fed. You cannot live without protein and you can't live with all these vitamins and nutrients. That's what we're here to do. So we're happy to do so. And I'm really happy to be a part of this. So I hope you're here. If you stick it out for the whole series, you will be receiving all of those free tools, which you're gonna love them. I wanna show you my spiralizer. It's one of my favorite tools looks like this and the one you get is going to look like this too you just put your zucchini or your squash right in there and you spiralize it and it comes out like spaghetti i don't even eat spaghetti anymore i only do the spaghetti out of the spiralizer because it tastes just like it it's so much fun so while we wait for the vegetables again i'd like to just give a couple little shout outs one shout out for sure is the fact that the aarp what they do is they help bring nutrition science to you. So when you're a member, which it's a nonprofit organization, I'm not trying to sell because they do not need us to sell them, but they sell themselves. But they always put out different information. What I found on their website is that the animal studies have suggested it may be a benefit to a number of cognitive abilities, such as memory and staying sharp. And that is luteolin. Luteolin is found in cauliflower. It's a great vegetable and spices have this as well, like peppermint, thyme, and rosemary. So that's another thing I found on the website because they have webinars and they have everything else you can think of. So you'll have fun with that too. 
So does anybody have any questions before we keep it moving? I'd love to answer some questions related to what we're doing here or anything that has to do with nutrition science. Now, please go ahead and raise your hand, type it in the chat. Oh, Elizabeth Kent has a question. Chef Susie, what is tahini? Tahini is basically, it's basically a creamed substance from, made from sesame seeds. It kind of looks like peanut butter and it tastes like, like sesame seeds and that's how it's made. So it's basically a sesame seed paste. You can find it in your grocery store too. I have a follow-up question to that. Is it, would it be easy to make if I didn't want to buy a whole can of it, let's say in the grocery store? It would be very easy to make. However, when I bought my tahini, I've had it for a year. I use it in so many recipes. It lasts forever and has a great refrigeration process to it. So you can just refrigerate it, have it for a long time. But yes, you can make it with sesame seeds. It's pretty simple too. The food processor and a little bit of water. Awesome, thank you. Um, I also noted that in the chat that there are substitutes for tahini. Um, peanut butter might be the most cost effective, but I would imagine you could use hummus as well, which is ground chickpeas. Could you use that in, instead of tahini if you needed to? I think that anything is possible here. When you're in the kitchen, anything's possible. Yes, totally do. But I do know this, that in this recipe, it does call for a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. Now I am gonna use it here in my kitchen, a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper, but some people use no salt substitutes, which are great too. Now with salt, it interferes with medications. So we don't really like to give out the, the information of adding salt to your meals. I usually don't add salt to my meals because there's salt and so many other things. So I figure it's gonna find its way in there anyway. But you definitely want to refer to your health practitioner when you're talking about salt and how much you can take in your body. But I do know this, today we're working with fiber. Cauliflower has so much fiber and it supports a healthy digestion. Some people do not get enough fiber in their diet. That's the first thing I learned in school was that mostly women are deficient in fiber, which is so crazy, but we're not really finding it. We don't really know where it is. Some people don't know where to find it. You have to figure it out. It's definitely in green leafy vegetables, that's for sure. So if you're not adding fiber to your diet, you won't have to tell us because you don't know yourself because you're the one making your bowel movements. <laughs> so Susie, we have a couple of uh, questions and some comments. So uh, Charlene would like to know, can you use canola oil in place of uh, extra virgin olive oil? 100%. You can even use safflower, safflower oil too. That's another good one. We've also got, uh, I've heard that beans are good for your kidneys. Is that true? Well, how about you, Aurora, on that one? Beans are a tough one. Um, now, when they say, are they good for the kidneys? I don't know what kind of um, kidneys we're talking about. Are we talking about ones that have already seen disease? Are we talking about healthy kidneys? It's a, a broad, a broad statement there, but maybe our registered dietitian can answer. Yeah, that would really have to do with your health. And so, uh, you know, for healthy people, they're wonderful for everything. But if you do have kidney issues and you're watching your phosphorus intake, um, you will want to probably limit your intake and be be aware of the phosphorus content in beans. So that's one of those nutrients that you have to. Um, pay attention to depending on what stage of kidney disease you're at. So uh, be sure to check in with your registered dietitian or your dialysis clinic um, to make sure that you're following, you know, the diet orders that they've given you. Now, food is an important part in supporting our health and wellness. It is a very important part, but investing in our, in our cooking doesn't have to be difficult or time consuming. You can actually make it easy for yourself and you can get the benefits that you deserve. So a lot of people say, I really don't cook. I really never use my oven. I really just, I'm not into it. It's not for me. Well, maybe it wasn't for you before, but play a little bit of music, get into it. And it's a great date. If you like somebody and you think they're cute, invite them over to make a meal. Nothing better than making a meal with somebody. Nothing better at all. 
And it's also great to do with your grandkids. They love it. You wouldn't believe how much they love it. You pull up a chair, give them a cutting board, give them a kid-friendly knife, give them a vegetable peeler and a cucumber, boy, they will start telling you their whole life's long secrets. Everything comes out in the kitchen. If my daughter's on here, she can agree to that. That's how we had our best conversations is in the kitchen. <laughs> but a great example is today's recipe. I mean, this is a roasted cauliflower with chickpea and lemon tahini dressing. Again, we chose cauliflower because in Nevada, it is seasonal. And it comes in many different colors. You'll see purple, green, and orange. It's the color of the rainbow. And all of those colors play a very big part in what it does for our health. And that's why we try to make meals like a rainbow. There should be on your plate. This is what I teach the kids. I'll teach it to you too. This is my plate. This is called my plate. Myplate.gov is where you can find more information. But on your plate, you should always have fruits, vegetables, proteins, and grains on your full plate three times a day. So if you're not seeing all four of these, please make it possible to get all four of them, at least for your grandkids. Teach the kids about this as well. Maybe a couple grapes, maybe a couple carrots, a piece of chicken, maybe some grains, a, a whole grain slice of toast. I mean, there's many ways of getting it, but this is what your plate should look like. Unfortunately today, plates don't always look like this, but we wanna help, that's why we're here. And that's why we offer all these programs. Yes. Here's Chef Susie, Aurora, uh, Dr. Buffington has her hand up. Hey, thank you. Hey, Chef Susie. You know, sometimes I'm so lazy and I always have the best of intentions when I purchase my fresh produce at the store, but it'll sit in my um, crisper, which um, if I don't use it right away, then it turns into the rotter. So in order to avoid that with cauliflower, if I get really lazy, is, is it okay if I just put the whole thing inside the oven and roast it? Oh my gosh, it's delicious. You take that cauliflower and you use a tool like this and you marinate that cauliflower and you just rub on there a, a, any sauce you like and you bake it in the oven it comes out it feels like a meat it is delicious you could add honey balsamic there are so many ways you can actually google roasting cauliflower it'll show you so many recipes but one of my favorite things to do with cauliflower is to cut it down into long circle pieces, long and fat, and bake it in the oven flat and serve it underneath a piece of meat or even as a protein. It is delicious. Even on the grill, it works nice too. Thank you for that, Chef Susie. Yes. And for your question, um, Dr. Buffington, uh, Kat, Catherine has a question. Would you be able to freeze the leftovers? Absolutely. I froze mine. It's in the freezer right now and it looks great. And all I have to do is take it out of the freezer, let it thaw for about 10 minutes and then throw it maybe back in the oven or in the microwave. And you've got yourself a great side dish. That is wonderful to hear. Um, I always like to cook maybe double my recipe and so that I have less cooking later on in the week. I do have a question. Um, like Aurora, I sometimes buy things and um, something comes up and I don't necessarily get to use them. So I freeze them. And so would I be able to use frozen cauliflower in this recipe? Absolutely. The best thing to do is don't freeze it as a whole cauliflower, break it up and then throw it in a Ziploc baggie or a secured container and put it in the freezer like that. That's the best way to do it. It'll come out with frozen. It'll have some ice chips on it. Just let it get to room temperature, throw it on a pan, drop it in the oven or put it in the microwave and you'll have yourself some cauliflower. And you can That's make wonderful. great cauliflower ideas like the cauliflower hummus and the cauliflower mash. They're so delicious. Have you ever had a cauliflower pizza crust? Unbelievable. So I'd imagine then you could also buy a bag of frozen cauliflower in the grocery store and use that as well. Absolutely. Perfect. Vegetable Thank you. That you can afford is the best vegetable that you can use. So if we have no other questions, I'd also like to, we have about nine minutes left on our al dente roasted vegetables, but until they come out, I definitely want to remind you to tune in to our next cooking series. That episode is gonna be a lot of fun because the weather's getting colder and soups are fun and they freeze really well too. 
what a great thing to do as a friend, bring over a suit to somebody. I mean, can't go wrong. It's the best gift you can give. And again, um, you'll get those free culinary tools when you register for all of our classes, which is exciting. And our amazing partner, AARP, which they offer all of these great, great virtual videos and all kinds of stuff across the whole country, which is great. So you'll have that too. And that's what we love. And I'd like to give a shout out to somebody named Rebecca D'Amato. She's on here today. She's a recent graduate of UNLV School of Public Health, and she's part of Extension's Healthy Aging Team. She has been volunteering in the field of gerontology for several years, and she's helped me put this together. Her and I have been great working together. We've been going on about the recipe cards. As a matter of fact, if you miss this show and you want to give it to someone else, she's going to actually make it into, she's going to record it with captions so we can actually use this again and you can watch it over again, which is going to be great. So thank you, Rebecca, for your hard work on this. We appreciate you. And a, back to those congregate meals that they offer. When you call the number 211, you can find out where they are. One of them I actually participated in, and that is at the VFW on the west side of town. They do a once a month Italian meal where everybody comes together and any age is welcome. You can bring your grandparents or they can bring you. And you can sit together and have an Italian meal with light Italian music. And they always offer some great free uh, different booklets on how to get free wheelchairs and walkers and how to get dentistry and all different programs. So it's a great resource center as well. And that's once a month. And I'm really proud of the one that I helped put together there. And I wanted to give uh, say hi to Rivka. Hi, thank you again for helping me last week in Las Vegas with all those students at Griffith Elementary. You were a lot of fun. Hope you're doing well. Rivka is a dietetic intern at UNLV, which I was too one day. And I had to do my community and everything she's doing. She's going to rock it out there. Dietitians can go in many different ways. They can cook and do a cooking show like this, or they can work in a hospital and help people with tube feeding and help people get back on great diets after a heart attack. Registered dietitians are very important. And most people don't know this, but sometimes your insurance covers one. One a year, I think you can get. Is that true? Or still, you can still get one registered dietitian appointment a year, even on Medicaid. I think it just depends on um, the services that your um, insurance covers mm -hmm. and your chronic disease conditions. Because some chronic yeah. disease conditions do aren't um, able to receive medical nutrition therapy. So um, check with your insurance provider to see what's covered. And if it's not covered, um, you know you can still see a dietitian um, and. To find a dietitian near you, you would just go to eatright.org uh, and um, click on their find the dietitian tool. Uh, we, all, we constantly give out that information. Eatright.org is the best place to go before you start Googling places and finding all this misinformation. And then at the bottom, you'll see they're trying to sell a medication. Always go to eatright.org. That's where you'll find your evidence based nutrition information. That's the place to be. So I'm glad we brought that up today. Yeah, that is a great thing. Um, as you're searching the web for, say, articles or articles on nutrition or health or the nutrient content in some of your produce or uh, any of the products that you may want to use to cook, try and make sure that they do come from credible sources. Um, you can always run them by any one of us here. I'll share my email at the end. Um, you know, anything that you're going to get from AARP is going to be backed by a credible source. Anything you get online at UNR Extension or the Sanford Center for Aging is also going to be uh, have a credi credible source to it. Um, and I'm going to post a link to the uh, dietary guidelines for older adults. Um, and so you can always check there to uh, to to see anything with the USDA.gov would also be credible. We've got about four minutes left. That's how easy this recipe was. We're just roasting vegetables. But when I roasted these vegetables, I thought to myself, how many other vegetables I could have added to that pan? I mean, whatever you have in the fridge, like Aurora said, some things are going bad because she's not using them. Grab them, chop them up, throw them in some oil and bake them and roast them. You can use them as pizza toppings, salad toppings. You can freeze it and use it for a night and throw some pasta with it. 
The million things you can do before you throw it away. <laughs> so once my roasted vegetables come out of the oven, I'm going to throw them in this bowl. I'm going to toss them together in this dressing that we made from scratch. Again, this dressing had lemon, Dijon mustard, a little bit of olive oil, tahini, red pepper flakes, and parsley. A very simple dressing that you can actually upgrade your way. And you can add other spices and seasonings to it, whatever you like. But we made it this way. And we have a recipe card that you might get already. And maybe we can put it in the chat box. But that recipe card gives you all of the ingredients and the instructions of how to make this recipe. It also has the nutrition analysis of it as well. Because we're always thinking about diabetics, kidney disease. We're thinking about everyone with every disease. And we're trying to make a recipe that works for everyone, which is not easy because you have to watch all kinds of different things depending on what people might be allergic to. There might be all different types of information that we don't have, but we're making it simple and we're trying to promote vegetables, especially cauliflower. We're trying to get people to buy vegetables, get them from the farmer's markets, get them at the food pantry, get them in the frozen section. However you get your cauliflower, wash it real nice, go ahead and chop it up, or you can slice it down thick and make it as a plant-based alternative meat product, you can do a million things with it. But one of my favorite things to do with cauliflower is a cauliflower mash. I learned this recipe from Chef Mario Batali one day, and it's cauliflower, white onion, chicken stock, some fresh parsley, and some Parmesan cheese. You mash that all together in a saute pan for about an hour, and it gets nice and melty, and it is amazing. You put it on top of rigatoni noodles, and it becomes an actual dish, which I love. One of my favorite cauliflower dishes. Does anybody else have a cauliflower dish they want to share with us? Cauliflower is different. It's a lot of fun, but it's definitely different. I love doing the different colors too. Beautiful. Uh, Riley has raised her hand. Do you have a recipe or a good thing that you'd like to do with cauliflower, Riley? I just wanted to share that we made cauliflower hummus, garlic hummus, and it was so, so delicious. And we just, instead of, um, you know, chips or something, we used uh, carrot sticks and celery, and it was just a really great dip um, for our family football watch party. That's great. Did you use a food processor? Uh, yes. Food processor. So you put all the ingredients in there and you just mashed them up. Wow, sounds really good. Since I don't Very have a food processor, easy. Riley uh, and uh, Chef Susie, do you think I could use a blender? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to take our roasted vegetables out of the oven and we're going to throw them in this bowl. Remember, they should be al dente, they shouldn't be all the way soft. They should be and that's why it's 400 degrees for 30 minutes. Pull them out. Let's see what they look like when they're all done. And we're going to put them right in this bowl here. Just change mitts here. Use my rubber spatula. And um, Chef Susie, I have a question. Like, if we do like our vegetables a little bit softer, is it okay to leave them in longer? Oh, absolutely. The reason why they're al dente is because they're still going to get tossed in this dressing and they're still going to be, there's still, people don't realize this, but food still cooks. Even though it's out of the oven, this food's still cooking right now. It's still cooking in the bowl too. It'll keep cooking until you put it on the table. So I always kind of, even with pasta, go a little al dente because it's still going to cook more. So now, We've got our beautiful roasted vegetables. Now we're gonna to toss in our dressing that we made together. Now this parsley really made it so green, but it's a great dressing. Now you can use less or more, and you can do that because you can do it your way. This is just our way. We wanted to give you a nice recipe for your fall dinners. We wanted to see if maybe you can throw this into your new rotation of meals. Look at how great this looks. It's a beauty. So now I'm just going to put it in this white dish right here, and I'm going to serve it as a side dish for tonight's dinner. 
I mean, those garbanzo beans, you never taste them so good, especially with the dressing. Now we've got this beautiful side dish that you can freeze and you can put meat right on top of it. You can serve it on the side. You can do anything you like. You could even throw yogurt in it, maybe sour cream or whatever you like, but it looks awesome. Now remember guys, remember to tune in next month. It's the second Wednesday of every month. And we want you to be here. We're thanking you so much for tuning in. And this is our first show of Simply Delicious, Easy Healthy Meals. We will be recording this and adding captions to it for those that might want to watch it again. But we really hope that you tell your friends and you join in and we can get more people every month and it can be a huge success that we'll just keep this thing going and we'll add your recipes. You can tell us what you want me to make and I'll make it for you and teach it to everybody. So we want this to be like a community and that's what we're looking for. We want to help you. So thank you so much. This was wonderful. Uh, I, we all wish we could be there in your kitchen right now, enjoying um, some of this with you. Better try it. <laughs> Good idea. Let me try it. Make sure. God, there's so much parsley. It's delicious. Wow, you really taste that lemon. Wow. That lemon really does jealous. a lot of substance. That is a great dish. That there. is wonderful. Wonderful. I, I have sent the, um, I put the recipe in the chat and Rebecca will send out uh, the recipe card. She has already, she'll send it out again. And uh, for those of you that stay with us for all the series, at the end of the series, uh, we will be mailing hard copies of those cards to you, as well as any of those educational reinforcers or surprise and delight gifts if you uh, provided us your address we're really excited to do that and if you if you didn't provide us your address and you're rethinking that thinking you'd like to now just go ahead and register again and give us that information or contact rebecca and rebecca will make sure she puts that in there so that you get uh your goodies at the end but this was wonderful and i mean so many great tips and ideas on what we can do uh with just a simple cauliflower i'm i I love it. And the fact that we could do that with almost any vegetable that we have uh, in our refrigerator also makes me super happy. Does anybody have any last minute question for Chef Susie? Go ahead and just raise your hand if you'd like. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate your support. And I can't wait to see you next month and every month. And I'd love to do this for you more. So bring more people and let's make this a party. I agree. I don't think we have any more questions, but again, thank you so much. This was uh, so amazing. And um, I, I just can't say enough great things about uh, how wonderful this episode turned out. Thank you. Thank you guys. We'll see you November 10th. That's the second Wednesday of every month. We're gonna make sweet potato pumpkin soup. Thank you again. Uh, you can feel free to log off now if you'd like, and uh, we'll probably stay on for another minute or two in case you have any other additional questions. Um, and at that time, we will uh, remove you from the cooking class if you are still on. Otherwise, feel free uh, in the next couple of minutes to still ask a question. Wow, that Dijon mustard, wow. It's really good. You could probably do this without tahini. Oh, that's good to know. Without it, tahini, yeah, because it's that good. Just uh, FYI, you know, um, for people that are um, vegan, you know how we need to have complementary proteins, right? And one of the things that we, that I discovered not too long ago was that tahini um, and chickpeas, when you combine both of them, make a complete protein. So isn't that something, you know, that's just such a neat, a neat fact, you know, I mean, that's why people have been combining it probably, you know, for years because they knew that they needed both of them to get all those essential amino acids. So 
really just a neat thing. I mean, if you wanted to make this really clean and raw, you could just add the lemon and that's it. That's how good it is. Wow.